Are we live? I do believe that we are. Welcome. Okay, so I want to show everybody something today. There's this book about where yoga comes from, what yoga is. Look at this. Oh, look, here's another one about what yoga is. Jesse, Jesse has here's another one. one. Here's another one. Do you know what's missing? There are no yoga postures in this book, in any of these books. There's no yoga postures. Literally a book about what yoga is, and there are no poses on here. I'm so confused. I heard well, uh, <laughs> these are the yoga sutras, Stella. I heard uh, Satguru say that he actually met somebody that was convinced that Madonna created yoga or that yoga came from California. Like that's what they thought yoga was. <laughs> and <laughs> so today what we're discussing, our short discussion is that Yoga is from the Yoga Sutras. And sutra is a Sanskrit word that means suture, like to thread, right? Like we're like threading together. And what yoga really is, is the mechanics of how to be human. That's what yoga really is. Yoga is really a 15,000 years scientifically proven because we've tried it over and over again experience. Yoga is an experience. We can talk about yoga, we can do down dogs, but that's not what yoga is. Yoga comes from these sutras, these threads, these little bits of wisdom about how to be human. Yeah. There are actually four of them and that's what the sutras are. The sutras is about understanding your mind. It's about recognizing and purifying the patterns of who you are. It's about how to stabilize that yourself. It's about how to stabilize yourself. And then how about going beyond that so that you can actually have lasting change. It's those four things. That's what the sutras are. Yeah. And in our yoga teacher training, this is our only textbook. Our only textbook is this, because this is pretty much this is the guidebook. This is the blueprint on how to live a fulfilled life as a human here on this planet. And the right, sutras are broken up into four books, four padas. And kind of the first two are like the goal of yoga. The first one's the goal of yoga. And the second one is the practices of yoga. And so just even the first two chapters, the first two padas, there's a lot to read being human is mind-blowing literally mind-blowing right and it's about understanding understanding your own mind so that then you can go into the practice of it so you need to understand yourself who you are and that's what yoga is the union right of that of understanding how everything is connected to everything because if the trees weren't there anymore you wouldn't have any oxygen to breathe so it's about understanding your relationship to that so that you can demystify or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Deconstruct the patterns of your own life. That's what yoga is because it's an experience. Yoga is an experience and it's about not accepting it because somebody else said it, right? Like because somebody else did it, because they said it, because that's what you heard worked but you have to actually do it like we can talk about meditation you can talk about down dogs but if you haven't actually experienced it that's what yoga is mm -hmm. it's not about burning sage or sweating on your mat or using crystals or any of that it's about understanding yourself experiencing your own life and creating your experience and each of the yoga sutras, these threads are little pieces of how you can practice 
experiencing yoga, how you can apply this to your life and practically use it to, you know, feel good in your human experience. And the, in the yoga sutras, what is it? There's only one sutra that talks about asana, right? There's only one sutra that talks about what we do with our, our movements, our postures. Right. And it just simply says that we need to move so that we can actually sit still. Yeah. Right? So that we can because master our minds. We can master our minds, right? Because, you know, you're like, oh, I'm trying to meditate, like sit down. Like that's not the point. Sometimes you need to move. Sometimes we need to move around a lot, like, especially with the ways that we live as urban yogis, we're so programmed with like doing things and lists and like, oh, now I've got to go do my yoga. Right. So in order to get to the state, to be able to experience our minds, we need to move around a bit, which is completely reasonable. I think, right. Like it's reasonable. I need to move around a little bit so I can actually be still. I need to. 100%. 100%. I love a good vinyasa flow. I love a good vinyasa flow, but I'm so disenchantized by like the fact that like all these places are called yoga when really I think they should be called like asana or like there's all these um, yoga gyms is what I like to call them. Like it's a yoga gym. It's not necessarily like a true yoga shala or a true yoga studio where Mm -hmm. we're practicing the mind body connection, right? Because really, again, this is about understanding our own mind, being able to recognize the patterns and stabilizing it. And that's what the sutras are in the four books or the four chapters of the sutra, which is why that's what we use, right, in our program, because it only makes sense. Like anybody can teach you how to do a down dog. Mm -hmm. You got to do the down dog. And so if you're looking to learn more about yoga, pick up a yoga sutras book. Yeah. This book is, this book is, I feel like every time I open it, sometimes I just open it and I just like, I'm going to pick a random, like pulling a card. But what do the yoga sutras need to teach me today? And then I'll just land on a, a teaching and I read about that. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I need to apply this to my life. And this, um, this yeah. is full this is, of those. And this is probably the yoga sutras of Pantanjali is really like the most popular, um, most popular used currently, at least in our area of the yoga sutras. And there are so many different uh, variations, which is the other one that Jesse pulled up. And then like, I love Ron Box because it's really simple introduction. I know when I first like read this one, like it was almost like too much for me, Yeah, you know? So um, using the seeker's guide was really fucking amazing because it really helped. uh, It helps sort of bring it down to the level and then going into the next one might be helpful for you. Yeah. Ron box book. He did a great job of really making it simple. Yeah. So yeah. that's what the sutras are. And Yoga we're really hoping that this helps you understand like the experience of your life and the experience of your humanism, right? There's like, it's tried and true practice for over 15,000 years. And the first yogi just came and sat. That's what he did. So I think like anybody can do circus, circus tricks, bending their bodies, holding their breath. Like the people on Instagram are definitely way better at that than the majority of true yogis. And that's the truth because true yogis might not necessarily need all of that anymore. So I think that like all these um, acrobatics are super fun. Right. But like stilling them or being with your own mind, don't forget trying to still it being with your own mind and being with your own self is the true practice of the sutras of yoga. Mm -hmm. And I hope this is also a good reminder to, I know I need these reminders as a yoga teacher and yoga teachers out there that might be watching this, go back to the yoga sutras, pick it up, look at it. It's going to, inspire you to maybe you know light a little fire in your practice or maybe teach something in one of your next yoga classes or something like that like this book is just full of you know inspirations educations so and practices 
these little threads of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So I hope that helps you. If you're thinking about becoming a yoga teacher, if you're a yoga teacher already, I'm Stella with Stella Luna Yoga School. And I'm Jesse. <laughs> and uh, we just want you to have the best day ever. Maybe in peace. Blessings.